Well, it gives me great pleasure to introduce Christy or Christy Ebon from Orbita. I was going to say Christy Orbita. That's not your last name. Christy Ebon from Orbita, uh, SVP Corporate Orbita, and she's going to be sharing something very cool because they have been working on a um, an experience using their platform that really helps us to get some good information, not misinformation, very good information about what's going on. And uh, I'm really excited to be able to introduce Christy. So Christy, I'm going to share my screen to pull up your slides here. So we'll do that. And then I'm going to get out of here and I'm going to give you the stage. So it's mine. All right. Sounds good. Thank you so much for having me. Um, and also thanks to to everyone listening who's working, I know, around the clock right now to address um, what's happening, which is unprecedented. Um, I will say as a public health person, it's been uh, kind of exciting in terms of what's the silver lining to see certain concepts, epidemiological concepts like flatten the curve, go viral um, and be mainstream conversations. So um, I do think as, as a country, um, as a globe right now, we are we're really we're learning a lot very quickly. Um, and I'm encouraged by just the general tech enabled response and outreach that, that folks are doing. So um, I thought today what I would talk about is a little bit uh, what we are seeing at Orbita, a little bit about what Orbita is and how we're responding. Um, all of our customers are in the healthcare and life sciences industries. And so the last few weeks have been quite interesting to say the least. Um, but real quick, a little bit about my background. Um, whole career has been in health and tech. We started at a little company called Epic Systems when they were about 900 employees many moons ago, um, and then have since spent time in policy and with large foundations um, and startups. And, and most recently, before Orbita, was leading digital health um, and emerging technology for Cedar Sinai. And before that, was at Stanford launching launching digital health initiatives there. So uh, it's been interesting to see the industry evolve. Um, Orbita, what, a little bit about uh, Orbita. We are a conversational AI platform for healthcare and life sciences. And so um, we've been experiencing quite a bit in terms of what our customers are navigating on the front lines. Um, but wanted to contextualize, if you go to the next slide, uh, Terry, contextualize a little bit in terms of what we're looking at and where we are in this pandemic. And so many of you are familiar with the Johns Hopkins um, Center for uh, system science and engineering has a large GIS graph on the global pandemic and the cases that we're seeing. This was a screenshot from this morning. I have a feeling it's it's gone up significantly since then, since we're in the exponential curve. What we're what we're looking at right now, um, obviously, is not just flattening the curve, but really strengthening preparedness and frontline response. And so, when we think about what are some of the biggest problems front and center that we can use technology and we can use voice to support our response to. A lot of it is around that initial triage, initial education of the general population, um, and also being able to specifically meet the needs of those who are most at risk or those who are symptomatic. And so with a curve like this, uh, it's fundamentally impossible to scale uh, people um, out of the gates, uh, given where we are at in the pandemic. And so. That's something that we've been focused on a lot is what does this frontline screening and triage look like? Um, how do we use the technology that we have and voice specifically to address some of these things? And so um, what we've what we've done is actually pretty interesting and, and I'm excited to, to talk a little bit more about it. So if you go to the next slide, um, wanted to give you guys a little bit more context and background. Next slide, there we go. What a lot of folks are turning to, right, is the United States Center for Disease Control and Prevention, or the CDC. Um, the CDC content on the website has definitely been premier content in the globe. Um, one of the challenges of this, though, is that some of those that are most at risk are not able to reach this content. And so if we think of um, some of the oldest in our communities, the aging populations, or maybe even the digitally uh, less uh, uh, less resourced um, or digitally illiterate. Some of those folks um, who also tend to have often some of the, the more challenging health outcomes, they're not necessarily you know, navigating to the nearest website and they're not necessarily getting the best clinically vetted content from those in the know on the front lines as this very real situation evolves um, minute by minute. I think one of the things that we want to look at is how do we use voice to address some of those accessibility concerns and issues? 
um, and, and specifically to protect the populations that are most at risk. Because while we know that um, the numbers statistically are looking like a vast, a vast majority of the population will be infected at some point, we know that the, the scary adverse outcomes um, and risks are happening amongst really marginalized populations, those that probably aren't surfing websites, websites regularly, um, and also the aging population, or those that are in senior living facilities or, or um, otherwise have those limitations. Let me go to the next slide. So a little bit about Orbita, um, just for a level setting. Uh, we have been in the conversational AI space for at least five years now. Our team comes from a web content management background and so um, are very versed and familiar with how to navigate uh, getting content out to the masses and some of the challenges of that digitally. We do right now, on top of our platform, we built solutions for uh, consumer marketing, digital marketing. Uh, we've done a lot of work around voice SEO um, and, and making services and businesses discoverable. Um, and then also in the customer service and contact center space. And so that's an area obviously right now with frontline uh, COVID-19 response, the contact centers are completely overwhelmed. Um, and it's been hard to keep up with, with the outpouring of, of questions and concerns and demand. Um, another area that we're, we've done a lot of work in is around population health and, and specifically with remote patient monitoring. So voice and chat enabling uh, in-home solutions. Uh, a lot of these also, again, with the, with the marginalized, with the sick, um, and a lot of them with, you know, digitally under-resourced. And so when I talk about voice, I'm usually speaking most broadly in terms of voice, not just on smart speakers like the Amazon Alexa or the Google Home type devices, um, but also within the analog phones and the landlines, because that continues to be a modality that many of the biggest consumers of healthcare right now and the most at risk of, of the novel coronavirus um, are still using. And so if you picture your senior, um, your aging loved one, your, your family's octogenarian in their senior care facility, um, they're generally not, you know, using the latest apps and, and um, the stuff that, the, that, you know, my millennial generation is churning out. So that's the space that we play in. Um, we've, we've been in the space for quite some time. We've, we're excited about the opportunity to rise to this occasion in terms of uh, being able to do meaningful work when, when we know so many people are, are ad adversely affected and out of work. And so my, my long hours the last couple of weeks, I think, um, on a personal note, are also some of the most fulfilling in terms of feeling like the uh, the inflection point has arrived in our industry for for everyone working in in digital health and health technology um, the the opportunity to truly make an impact uh, is here and so that's a that's a little bit about Orbita. If you go to the next slide, I want to talk a little bit more about what we've done um, and what we are doing to help address some of the frontline response to COVID-19. As many of you know, the, uh, the health systems, the provider systems are, are overwhelmed. And the, po the problems are not simple. Um, we've got a shortage of supplies in terms of personal protective equipment or what we call PPE, um, a shortage of ventilators, uh, which are used in the intensive care units or the ICUs for the sickest patients among us. Um, we've got frontline providers and staff that are at risk and we need to take care of their health um, and, and those communities, otherwise the, the rest of us are in trouble. And so what we did is we looked at um, kind of a few, a few areas of opportunity. One, how do we keep the what we call worried well patients out of the hospital? How do we comfort them, provide them with the right information in an experience that's specific to them? Um, and, and allow them to kind of check in uh, and check in, check on that information. Um, so that was the thing one. Thing two was for at-risk and symptomatic patients, how do we check in on them? How do we make sure that they're doing okay? We know that you know, for most people, it's gonna be a matter of recovering at home, taking care of themselves, um, you know, self-isolation, but making sure that they're uh, recovering appropriately and quickly and should anything go wrong that that we're able to quickly meet them meet their needs and get them in to be seen and then thing three is really for employees uh, on the front lines how do we keep them healthy because uh, with given the issues with shortages and just the highly infectious nature of this virus 
um, that's a, that's a big thing too. So our team has been scrambling and working with our provider and payer and uh, life science uh, customers on the front lines. And, and what we've come up with is what you're looking at on your screen. So the first is what we call a screener and a navigator. And so we're actually offering for free uh, in the U.S. a web-based English language chatbot that uh, that does uh, it does screening and it also has a very robust knowledge base with it. It's, I, in my opinion, it's one of the most robust in the marketplace. Um, this is a, this is something you can host on your website, and it really gives an opportunity for when you have these worried well patients, um, people with you know older family members are just anxious and concerned as we all are that when they come to your site or your institution that they have a tool they can interact with to help them understand what they're dealing with um, if there's one thing we know right now is that a lot of the digitally literate among us um, are very good at finding information but there's also this middle this kind of gray area of folks that aren't quite sure where to turn to um, and so uh, keeping content updated online has been a challenge. And so that's kind of our option or what we're doing there. Um, happy to talk to folks about, about getting that up and running. We also offer a premium version of that tool that's offering uh, screening, uh, triage, and navigation to custom endpoints. So a lot of our customers are looking at for patients with um, who present with certain symptoms or with certain questions, they may want to direct, for example, an oncology patient who is higher risk um, or immunocompromised patient to a specific call center. Maybe it's one of your oncology centers of excellence has, uh, has a specific phone bank set up of teams that know the oncology patient experience and can speak to them. Um, maybe you have a virtual visit program that you've spun up and so you want to be able to direct patients to telemedicine or those virtual visits um, if they are kind of in a gray area and you're not quite sure if they should stay home and, and, and take care of themselves or if they need to come in and be seen at the risk of exposing both themselves and others. This, this premium version is also available in multiple channels. And so when we say chatbot at Orbita, we're providing a voice enabled chatbot as well. And so this obviously makes it much more accessible um, to, to folks who may be vision impaired or that's a better way for them to understand information. But we're also um, able to deploy it across channels like phone. So think of almost like an IVR 2.0 experience, um, smart speakers, um, or even via SMS text, which tends to be one of the most widely adopted uh, mediums of communication today. So that's the screener and navigator with knowledge base. Um, we're excited because it seems to be, and there's been great outpouring and response from the industry to provide this information. What we're realizing though, um, where that was our first stop, we quickly had customers come to us. There was one as a, a health system, um, of, they have about a million patients in their population. And they said, you know, we have patients that are symptomatic and they're at risk and they might not be, you know, checking the websites all the time or they spike a fever and they're you know 75 years old or they're 70 years old and they're not sure at what point is my fever concerning and so for this we've created what we call health checks and so this is an outbound notification that can be done via phone it can be done via sms and launch a chatbot or a voice enabled chatbot uh, within your smartphone and it's it's used to routinely monitor those patients check back in on them see how things are going um, and that does a couple of things. One, it keeps them away from the front lines where they are at more risk um, by, by being exposed to others um, and an overwhelmed system. But it also, too, gets them in to be seen at the appropriate time. Um, and so that's obviously critically important um, with such a dynamic uh, and, and quickly moving uh, infection that, that has really adverse impacts and, and outcomes on certain members of the population. The last of these three uh, is actually one I've become very excited about most recently around employee health, um, a large multinational medical device company uh, that makes ventilators, has about 90,000 employees came to us and said, how do we keep our people healthy? Because if they go down, we're really in trouble. Um, and so we've created a employee check that's checking in on, on, on them and a, a few other employers 
um, large employers to really support their frontline employees to provide resources um, and, and symptom checking and to, to make sure that if there are you know, issues and, and health and wellness issues that they can support those employees uh, and make sure that they're back on track to, to feeling better and also being able to support this frontline response at such a critical time. So I'm gonna pause here and take a breath, Terry, and see um, if you have any questions that, that you want me to answer or um, any other context that would be helpful. Like Christy said, if anybody has any questions, please feel free to type them in and we can, we can address those. I'm curious, like, this is so new. Do you have any metrics or do you have any type of results that you can report on? Like people that are using this, how are they finding the experience and what is it, how is it impacting their daily life? Yeah, that's a great question. It's very new. Um, we launched formally this week. Um, actually, one of these is launching in the next 24 hours. And so we don't yet have a lot of data on it, um, but we're hoping to get, get data very quickly. We've actually designed the data backend so that we can respond and adapt quickly. Um, we also have a tool that we use called, an, it's an insights tool that allows us to quickly get and detect frustration um, and when something's not working. And so our teams are able to very quickly see when somebody says like, oh, this bot's stupid or you're not answering my question, um, that we can say, I'm so sorry, can, you know, let me connect you to somebody or point you to someone that might be able to help. And so that's, that's at this stage in rollout, that's usually where we start, um, but I'm hoping we're gonna learn a lot very quickly um, in the next 48 hours. Extensively, because this is, I mean, what you described is so, comprehensive um really really cool and so most this could potentially be hosted on anybody's website i'm thinking that's right yep on anybody's websites that's what the way we designed it um we think our team comes from a web web content management background and after a lot of discussions we thought that would be the best way to make it most widely accessible mm -hmm. and then for for those who have really specific needs around at risk or symptomatic patients or, or employees um, we wanted to be able to provide them an extra level of support. Well, that's great. Um, any questions? I don't see any questions coming in. So um, I think with that being said, Christy, I'll just thank you very much. This is a, very impressive what you guys were able to put together in such a short period of time. It's it's wonderful resource. So um, thank you to Orbita and thank you to you for your time here. It's really appreciated. Where can people go if they do want to learn more about this or or you know get involved with this project? Absolutely. You can um, go to our website, orbita.ai, or also reach us on, on LinkedIn or reach me uh, personally on LinkedIn. I think my, my um, it's K Ebong, K-E-B-O-N-G or Christy Ebong. Um, and we'll be sure that we're responding very quickly. Um, we've got global teams, so we're working around the clock. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Christy. Thank you so much. All right. Stay healthy. All right.